Assalamu alaikum everyone, I hope that you guys are well. Today's episode is going to be talking about two very, very big questions. I'll link back to one big concept and inshallah, you know, it'll link out nice. You guys will enjoy it. I tried to record this before. I went on a tangent. I'll try to redo this again. So the two questions that we're really going to be evaluating in this topic will be what's actually wrong with you and why did God give me no choice except the choice that I have in front of me? And just going to be kind of talk about that niche because they link back in a certain way. So getting straight to the point. So getting straight to it, I recently started taking a psychology class and in no way, shape or form am I like, a, you know, pro at it really like I'm crippling in work. But one thing that, you know, you really, really focus on is like, why do we act the way that we do? What triggers it? You know, all that good stuff. And so I decided to do my term paper on major depression disorder because it just seemed like, you know, it just seemed like a me topic. I was like, I just got to talk about this, you know me. So one thing that I really, really recognized and saw while doing research and then while also just you know in general personal experience is that a lot of times things are wrong but we don't actually know what's wrong and the reason why you don't know what's wrong with you is because you're so busy trying to distract yourself from your emotions but then you're too busy to realize how you feel and it's like this horrible cycle where you want to distract yourself because it makes you feel better right like it's comfort for you but at the end of the night you're like how do I feel and the thing is our emotions, majority of the time, unless you're a person that doesn't mask it up, they're projected on the outside. If you're happy, you can see it. If you're sad, you could see it. And sometimes when we are very, very productive, again, productive in the sense of grind culture. And I'm very, very against grind culture, which is hypocritical because I, I don't, I'm a workaholic, but that's so bad. I'm so sorry. But you know, grind culture, where they just tell you, like, you always got to be working, you always got to be making money, you always got to be studying for school, like, you always got to be doing something that's productive. And Anything outside of that range, if you're not making money, you're not doing it for school, it's unproductive automatically. So it's a set category of two things. And anything after that's unproductive, useless waste of time. And the problem with this comes to be is that it's kind of wired in our brains as we grow from school and as we continue our education. It's just something that comes. And especially when you enter a college, you don't even have time to be sad, bro. Like you fill a quiz, shut up. Like you got you got another one waiting for you. There's just nothing for you to be sad about. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how college acts like. They just don't care enough. So they just shove in like quizzes down your throat. And the problem is when you don't have enough time to actually look at how you feel, it causes a problem because it accumulates. I recently learned this thing, and this is gonna sound stupid, but there's this thing called sleep debt. Where basically when you don't sleep enough and then over time, like it just accumulates on you and it's really, really bad for your health. And I was like, that is so interesting because it's kind of the same thing, especially when it comes to emotions. When you do not understand the way that you feel and why you feel it and you don't ask yourself what's wrong, you kind of just start gaining like emotional debt and you start to wonder what's up. I feel like we all have things in life that we love to do, but they're deemed unproductive and unimportant from the grind culture aspect. Like I personally love to paint. I love to do calligraphy doing like chronic chronic ayahs and writing them in calligraphy and whatnot and painting it. I find that fun. However, over the years, as time went on, anytime I sit down to do it, I'm instantly like, okay, I I could really be cracking on like a packet of homework right now. Like there's really no need for me to be doing this. Like I could be doing something else right now. I could be really productive right now. Like I could make a dent in like my schoolwork right now, but I'm painting. And automatically I feel guilty. And then I regret doing it. And this is the problem because we all have certain things that are like our free, fresh breath there. You know what I mean? Like it's just something you do to get out of the cycle. And I enjoy painting. So that's something that I try to do. But I'm going to be honest, I haven't done it in ages because it's just something that anytime I sit down to do, I start to struggle. And so I like to talk about things that I struggle with because I'm very, very open about them on here because why not? Why not? So... That's one thing that I struggle with. Now, there's some certain people, they love to draw or they love to, I don't know, play video games. They have certain things that they just love to do, maybe for like a small ratio in a day, but they end up feeling guilty doing it because it doesn't fit into grind culture and it doesn't fit into what society tells you is productive. So what happens is when you start to diminish your coping mechanisms and things that kind of help you reflect on how you feel they kind of give you time for yourself and kind of give you time to just be a human like have no strict bounding schedule just be you and do you you instantly start to think i'm so bad why i'm like lazy and why am i doing this why am i doing that like i feel guilty and then you start to pinpoint your emotions and you're like come on now like i gotta do better then you start getting back into like the hustle culture the grind culture and 
That's it. You just you just don't ever sit down to actually ask yourself how you feel. The thing is, sitting down and asking yourself, like, hey, how do I feel today? It's not easy. It's not something that everyone can do. Some people, they write it down in a journal. But some people, they do it through an activity. This is why I'm mentioning this. Like, for me, when I paint, I sit there and I think. I'm like, what's up with me? How do I feel? What's wrong with me? What can I do to figure this out? We all have something like that. Some people, they play video games and they are mentally processing how they're feeling. Some people, they like to take a drive and they like to go out and that's very, very fun. And they like to do it like that. So there's some things that you do to reflect on how one feels. But when you live in a cycle of I'm trying to keep myself busy so I don't have to give attention to my emotions, but now I'm too busy to give attention to my emotions, it's, it's going to kill you, bro. It really will. Like It's going to eat you out and you're going to start to get extreme burnout. And when burnout comes and you're not able to recover from the burnout, it eventually leads to depression because you start to wonder, oh, I felt like this before. Why am I not recovering? Why am I burned out this bad? I thought I was okay. I was being productive. I was living my best life. Yeah, you were productive. That doesn't mean you were happy. That's the thing. You reflect productivity as emotion and productivity is not emotion. Because when you pinpoint how happy you feel in according to your actions, it becomes a little bit wishy-washy. Now, there's really two ends of the spectrum. There are certain people that they could be really depressed, but they will let it all out through productivity and they will constantly be working to distract themselves. And then there are certain people that are so depressed that they don't even have the energy to get up and do anything. So there's two ends of the spectrum. And on both spectrums, somehow, it's bad. That's why you should try to be middle line or not even be on the depression spectrum, period. But on the lower end of the spectrum where you have no energy to do anything, you've automatically just made yourself feel and waste your time in doing the things that just don't matter. You just sit there on the bed all day thinking, why am I depressed? Why am I sad? I hate life. I hate this. I hate that. And it's it's not benefiting you in any way, shape, or form. You're. I hate to say this. This is going to sound really mean. This is going to sound so mean. Should I edit this out? Whatever. You're wasting your existence. You're wasting your existence, okay? Look, and I hate to say it in a mean way, but we all have something that we can contribute. We do. Don't lie. We do. And I was one of those people that are like, yeah, you know what? Like, yeah, you could change the world, but not me. Not me. Someone else will. Not me. Because I just don't have anything that I'm like great at you know how certain people they're great at something for the longest time growing up i just never had that thing there's certain people that are really good at math they're really good at science really good at english i just never fell in those categories man like i can do it i'll get a good grade yeah but it's just not something i see myself doing long long term in life and the problem comes is like if you want a job that pays you know especially when you are middle eastern and you're desi it's either math science Or math and science. Yeah, that's it. Or like engineering or stuff like that. But again, STEM stuff. Like, that's it. So the concept of doing really anything else after that is just kind of like, what are you, you want to be broke for the rest of your life? That's how Desi parents see it. Now, I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying that's how Middle Eastern parents see it. So you kind of force yourself into conditions you don't want to be in. And when it comes to being on the lower end of the spectrum, you have a purpose. Now, that purpose cannot, doesn't have to be education related. It doesn't have to be even family related your purpose can be something like motivating other people your story can be the thing that changes other people and i hate to say that it sounds cliche but it's true because it can and you can put that into action but you're not instead you're sitting here thinking every single day i hate life i wish i was never alive well guess what you are alive and there's nothing mean you can do about that now you want to go commit suicide really is it worth it though is it worth it you know one thing that really really puts suicide in perspective in my brain is if you were sad for this whole time you've been sad for five years straight do you not think you at least deserve to hold on to at least see happiness like what what was the point like you were sad for five years are you gonna throw that five years of work down the waste you hung on you made it you came through why why do you want to give up do you not want to at least see the happiness and it's worth it it's always worth it the happiness is always worth it so that's one thing that really puts it in perspective for me But now when you're going to sit here and complain that you hate life every day when there's nothing mean you can do about it, and already this life is 100% your accountability, you're selling yourself short. Life is not fun. Life is not always easy. We already know that. But you have something that you can turn to and you have something that you are able to turn to no matter what, which is God. It's always God. And people don't like to hear that because people don't like to turn to God because turning to God feels impossible to them because they just don't see God. And that's the thing. When you don't see God, you don't necessarily feel God. You automatically think God's not real. But that's not always the case because sometimes your comfort and the way that your heart feels after you talk to God is just absolutely enough to tell you alone that like there is something out there and that something can heal me 100%. 
And even if you're one of those people that are laying in bed depressed and you hate your life and you're like, I hate the way that I live, I hate who I am. Okay, I understand that finding the energy to walk on this whole journey of self-development is not easy, but the least you can do is start getting up and turning to God. Start praying. Start doing what is your religious obligations. Slowly but surely, the more you learn about God, the more you will learn about yourself. So it is a step that you have to take. But now when we're talking on the high end of the spectrum, people that are so productive when they're depressed, they get severe burnout. They get such severe burnout because they don't necessarily know what they're doing everything for. You're studying so hard in school. You're studying so hard for your work job, whatever. You're working so many hours. And the question comes down to what are you even doing this for? You're not happy. You have everything you want, but you're not happy. You're upset. You Maybe you even hate the career you're going into. Maybe you hate the job you're going to going to. Whatever it is, you don't like it. And maybe even if you do like it, it's just not a big enough passion for you to be out of your depression for you know what I mean so you start to question like what am I even doing all this for and I had that phase a lot in my life well I even now sometimes I'm like doing my schoolwork. I'm like man I don't even want to be in none of this like pack me up I want to become an alama but like I, I have to do what I have to do right and the thing is when you constantly force yourself to be productive when you don't want to be productive when you just sometimes need a break it causes severe burnout which eventually leads you to fall on the really 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 low end of the spectrum of depression because you start to not want to do anything at all so you see, like, both of these spectrums, they play a role on moving up and down. But the problem is, moving up and down sometimes is the worst thing, especially on this spectrum, because it feels like there is no escape. And quite frankly, there isn't. The only escape is getting out of the depression. And a lot of people think that getting out of depression is impossible. It's not. It's not. It, it's difficult. And there are some cases that are very, very strong. And yes, you need to seek help for them, 1,000%. But then there are some cases where... It's like, I hate to say this, but it's kind of like your average depression case, you know, and you can get out of it. And the way that you can get out of it is if you haven't already changing your lifestyle, changing the way that you are turning back to God, realizing that God is the one that has made you, healed you, he'll take care of you. You know, I have a whole episode on that. You already know about all that. So that's one of the things that honestly does help you, but you need to find the energy to get up and do it. And that's the hard part. And the reason why a lot of people fall into this spectrum is because sometimes they have no choice. And this is, again, coming back to that question I stated in the very, very beginning. Why does sometimes, sometimes, why does God give you no choice except one choice? And it's not the choice that you want. The problem here is there's two realities. The reality that God has chosen for you, that is honestly, it's always perfect. It's your qadr. Allah has written it walk and change qadr and then there's your reality what you think is perfect but the reality that you think is perfect is created with your limited knowledge it's created with what you know and what god has allowed you to know the reality that god has created for you is the one that has infinite knowledge because he made this deciding that this would be good for you and now sometimes things will come your way and things and choices will be made that you don't like that you don't want to do and it will seem like hell and sometimes it will feel like it like it's just suffering non-stop But God made that decision for you with his infinite knowledge. And if someone has way more knowledge than you do, I feel like you should trust them. Especially when it's God. Why not? Why not? Has God ever made a decision in your life that you regret or that you think came out to be a bad decision? And I want you to answer that question. Because honestly, you won't be able to say no. You really won't. And if you do say no, you're not looking at the fact that whatever he's taken away from you, he either gave you something better for it, he will give you something better for it, or it had something really, really bad hidden in it, and that's why it got taken away. So essentially, there's really only three answers to your dua. Not right now. I'll give you something better. Or yeah, like, okay, we'll make it work. That's it. So essentially, God has never done anything bad to you. So when people have this mentality that, you know, God is mean to me. God is this. Why does God treat me like this? I've been making dua for years and then this happened. This is not fair. I'm angry with God. Who are you to be angry with God when God only wanted good for you? And sometimes the reason why things don't change is because of our mentality. You know, I've seen very, very close examples, and I'm currently seeing one right now, where people, they will constantly say, I've been making dos for years. I've been doing it for years. I had hope before, but clearly Allah's not listening. I've been praying istahad. I've been praying tahajid. Allah's just not listening. Like, he just doesn't care. I don't know where he is, but he's not listening. And I've been making dos for years. And when I'll talk to them about it, they'll always say, Oh, you know, I did have hope before, but now I don't have hope because he never answered me when I was making dua for years. And when I had hope, he never answered. So I'm just not going to keep it anymore. And that's, that's the problem. 
Because hope is something that, yes, it fluctuates, but it should never be something that you completely diminish out of your heart. And you say that I'm not going to keep hope anymore because God never answered what I wanted at the right time. God's timing and yours timing are very, very different timings. And sometimes those timings will match, sometimes they won't. And the majority of the times, I'm sorry, but they won't. And just because they don't match, that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. That something bad's going to happen to you. Things can go the wrong way and still end up the right way for you. Because if you believe in God and you keep the wakala, why not? Why not? You need to ask yourself, if you go through something and it brings you back to God, automatically it's a blessing. But if you go through something and it pushes you away and you start to get angry and you start to test God's power, it's a punishment. It's a punishment. Because why would God, who, first of all, he loves his servants, right? He loves us. Why would he punish us unless there's a reason for it? And honestly, I hate to say this, but this is going to sound really, really mean. In every single hardship that you go through, you have the choice whether you want it to be a blessing or a punishment. In a manner, you do. Because you have free will. And people start to question free will. They're like, how much free will do I actually have? Because if I'm reacting a certain way, didn't God write it for me? You also have to think about something mentally. This, this really puts free will in a perspective for me. So let's say you are going to take a test. And you go to the teacher. I'm not going to fill out any of these bubble and answers. not going to do any work. But I know that I'm going to get 100. So just give me the 100. But you're not going to fill in any work. not going to do anything. The, the teacher's going to be like, how are you not going to get 100 if you don't, until you don't do it? Because what if you do it and you do it wrong? And Islam is the same concept. Because so many of us say that we believe that we are Muslims. And then when we are put in test for it and we have to prove it, we fail. Free will is essentially going to help you prove your actions. Because at the end of the day, yeah, there's other that's in place. I get that. But you can't sit here and say, I believe, I do this, I do that, without actually putting it into action. God gave us free will, so we have the choice to choose between what's good and bad. When other places are the two choices in front of you, when you have the choice to go to good and you have the choice to go to bad, this is where your free will comes to place. Because I can sit here and say that I believe in Islam 100%, I'm going to go to Jannah 100%, but if my actions don't line up, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Likewise, you say you believe in God 100%, you say you believe in Islam 100%. But you're not taking the actions with your free will to prove it. It's unlikely that you're actually going to go to heaven. It's unlikely that you are being truth truthful to your word. Likewise, when a decision doesn't come in our favor, that doesn't automatically mean that it's all Qadr and Allah hated me and this is why like his hatred was just written in my Qadr. No. Why would God hate you? That's a question that I ask everyone. Like, Why would God even hurt you in the first place? Like, do you really think, like, just because you're so sinful, God's going to hate you for that? No. It does. If you're sinful and you're trying your best to stop sin, why would God hate you? You don't have an actual answer to that. Because there is, there, there's no reason God would hate you. God would never hate the ones that try their best to come on his path. Never. If anything, even after you disobey God and you go back to him for repentance, he still accepts it every time. So clearly he doesn't hate you. But you, on the other hand, you're sitting here trying to test his powers. Because the decision that you got was not what you wanted. You had no choice but to walk on the path that Allah had picked for you. And so now you're burying yourself with things from this dunya and things from that don't necessarily matter long term to ignore how you really feel, to ignore what is really wrong. Because at the deep root of it, you're unhappy with God. You're unhappy with what God had decided for you. Sometimes we also have decisions and choices that were made years ago where it didn't necessarily go in our favor and we didn't necessarily see the good in it. And even though it's been five years from since then, you don't actually see the good in it. So your iman has been kind of shaken. Like you know that, yeah, there's probably good, but you didn't see it. So you don't feel reassured. And what happens is subconsciously and a lot of times, even unintentionally, depends on the scenario, either or, you end up carrying, you know, a little bit of bitterness and grudge with God, which is very bad. But with God, you do bitterness and grudge because things didn't go your way. And on the outside, you like to say, oh, you know, it's whatever God decided best. I know I trust whatever. But inside, it's like a grudge. It's like, why did this happen? I really, really worked for this. I really wanted this, you know. 
whatever like i know there's good but i'm just not happy and you're just not in terms with what happened and that makes sense and i understand but one thing that you really need to remember is you holding a grudge against god is not going to benefit anyone you holding a grudge against anyone period even a human being it's only going to hurt you when you hold grudges and you get angry at people and you keep rethinking about things that didn't go in your favor and you just reflect upon them 24/7 you are only limiting how much of you could be completely living in this present moment because you're so caught up in what happened before and in the past and in the things that didn't work out in your way one situation i guess i call it a perspective one perspective i put in my brain that changed everything for me is you know we always hear that like oh if one door shuts another one opens and the problem is Sometimes what we don't talk about is when a door shuts and another one opens, we see that one is open, but we just want to go behind this door because we want to know what is behind this door. And the perspective that changed everything for me is there's nothing behind the door. That's it. There's just nothing. When one door shuts, the other one opens, there's nothing behind that door. If there was something behind that door, it wouldn't have shut. And this goes for relationships, situations, school, if you got rejected from someplace, everything. You know, maybe you worked really hard, you came to this door and this door shut on your face. God will open up another one. But don't sit here and think, "Oh my god, what if what would be what was in that door? Life would have been different right now if I got in. Life would be different right now if I was with that person." No. No. There there's just nothing after that situation. The door shut. There's nothing else for me and you to reflect on. So don't sit here and make mental scenarios and put yourself in different situations that never existed because sometimes our imagination tends to create situations and storylines that never actually happened and it makes us believe that there's something behind the shut door there isn't if there was you would take it you'd be out okay so sometimes Allah will put you in a door there will be something in you in there for you you will take what you need but then you'll be kicked right back out of that door because not every door is meant to be open forever not every door is even meant for you in the first place you'll see a lot of doors in your life that will shut right in your face i've had lots and lots of different doors that were shut smack in my face honestly and sadly a lot of times this happens in friendships and with people that you love where you put a lot of energy to them you know you spend a lot of good time together and the door shut you know when i first moved here and I I talk about this a lot but you know I never had like a good quality friendship I had friends they were good people I had some people I think who knew I was muslim but the topic of religion was just a topic that was like scary for me to talk about so I was practicing but I was not open at all about it and you know I had certain people that first of all there are people here that don't even know what islam is like Sometimes when I'm wearing a hijab like people they ask me they're like well, so what exactly like do you follow like what's your religion and I'm like huh <laughs> like that's the case too there's some people they don't even know about it and it's okay if you don't know it's okay to get educated and you know teach them about it but you know there are certain people they never really knew that um I was like muslim muslim like they say like I was praying five times a day and I was like actually actually practicing 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 right and when time came and they realized like i i bluntly said it like yeah i'm muslim like isn't it obvious like i i'm muslim i practice like this is my faith this is what my family believes that it does like it was mad awkward because to my face they were all oh my god that's so cool you know good for you and i i went on a whole drum roll and i was just like you know like I hate how people associate terrorism with Islam and you know it's like nothing like that and it's super peaceful and I feel like the media just does a horrible job with us so I'm very very hush about it but you know like I'm done like I'm done staying silent about something that I never even did in the first place I'm done staying silent and being embarrassed of people who like to call themselves Muslims and commit terrorism because they have nothing to do with me they have nothing to do with Islam and i'm very very i was very vocal about it i talked about it and in my face it was all, oh my god that's great you know we accept you for who you are and they told me like oh yeah we were assuming that's what you were you know from what not but we were just weren't sure whatever you know okay cool but um eventually i found out that they made a lot of fun of me <laughs> they were really really mean and it it kind of hurt like you know they 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 did the whole nine yards terrorist jokes and i don't even know 
how legit some of it is, but I've heard from some people that after that, like, nothing was just the same after I told them I was Muslim. Like, things just changed between everything, and they just were not that accepting anymore of me. And anytime, you know, a topic came up, somehow me being Muslim came into it, which now, alhamdulillah, I don't care. I wait for a moment for someone to mention it because I love talking about religion but back in the day when you're very very insecure about your religion you're very very scared and you're insecure about yourself when someone pinpoints you and you're the only muslim person in the area it makes you scared because you don't know you don't have enough knowledge and you're also scared because you don't have a good relationship with god but you're sitting here calling yourself muslim and now i know you know you got to put the act forth can't be sitting there being like yeah man like it would be haram to be friends with you right now because y'all are bad company y'all are not good influences like girls who suck but it's not easy to do that, right? So, whatever it is, they made a lot of fun of me for it. And, oh, it was so embarrassing. I can't even put into words. Like, I sometimes sit there and I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, why didn't you just smack them across the face? And like, Astaghfirullah, don't do that. <laughs> like, why didn't you just stand up for yourself? Like, stand up for the deen. Like, this is such a beautiful religion. But at the time, I was so ignorant. And I was also very, very depressed. And I was going through so much hardship with my relationship with god and i didn't even have any knowledge that like i couldn't put myself in a position to you know get out of that so you know i've always heard that they're making fun of me whatnot eventually when covid came you know again i heard like through texts like people were talking about it or people were hinting at it and it was just bad it was a mess and i remember like one time when i was like cutting off one of my friends you know when you cut off friends it's always drama it's always drama and me being muslim came into the play and like all these other theories and whatnot about me being muslim came into the perspective and i was like what does this have to do with anything because if i never even confirmed like i never legitimately sat you down and educated you on what islam is and like you know what i believe in and what what's going on with me you wouldn't even know you would not have anything to say about me so why are you even bringing this up now they did what they did and Alhamdulillah, you know, I cut off those people. I'm great, living my best life. Alhamdulillah. And recently, I had quite a few of them, you know, text me again. And they were talking to me. They're like, oh, you know, we used to hang out a lot. Like, what's up? Da da da. And I was just like, oh, you know, yeah, I understand. I'm just not your type of person no more. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I just don't be doing the things that y'all used to do. And I don't do the things that I used to do. So. I'm just not your type of person, but, like, I hope you're doing good and whatnot. Because I'm not. Like, you're not going to get any joy hanging out from me. Especially, why is there such a loud airplane? I did hope that didn't come in the audio, but I bet it did. Whatever. This is, like, the downfall of always recording a podcast next to the window. I just can't stop doing it. Anyway, so, it is what it is, you know? And I feel like if you were someone that I used to hang out with before, and now you see me now... I'm not going to be your type of company because while I am still same in regards to, you know, being fun, being lively, whatnot, I'm not the same morally. So there's a lot of actions and behaviors and habits that you strip away when you become a different person morally. And so I just don't think that I'm their cup of tea anymore. And even if they change, there's nothing wrong with changing and becoming better people. I respect that and I support, but um, I'm just not your cup of tea. So when all of this went down and I was insisting and I was like, there's something behind this door. Why is it that they got all this just because I'm Muslim? It's not that big of a deal. Like, why are they overreacting? Like, they thought they could knew it was quite evident. So why are they making it such a big deal? And I feel like they just kind of wanted to hear it from me to, you know, really put it all into action. May Allah forgive me. I'm not trying to assume anything bad about them or backbite or gossip or anything like that about them. But I always heard that there was something going on someone saying something about me being muslim i never 100 percent heard those things directly to my face but i have had like quite a few conversations where the underlining intentions seemed a little bit weird so i was so pissed off about you know the store being shut with all of this situation and i was like there has to be something behind here but then once it shut i really realized there was nothing behind it and once i you know i came to the new door i started a new phase there really wasn't anything behind that door And even if there was, there wasn't anything that I was going to benefit from. So that's the thing. When a door shuts, there's nothing behind it. And even if there is, it's nothing that's going to benefit you. That's why it's shut. That's why it's gone. It's time to move on. That's it. One thing that I also really recommend everyone to do and also install in their mindset, like I just mentioned, is feel and deal. When you go through something and it really damages you, it hurts you, 
or it was something that you weren't necessarily used to as out of the ordinary, you need to take the time to exactly realize that, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Why do I feel this? Okay, maybe this was weird. Maybe this was out of the ordinary. Or maybe this was unexpected and I got hurt. So you need to feel it and then you need to deal with it accordingly. How are you going to react in this situation? Are you going to make the worst out of it? Are you going to make the best out of it? Are you going to take this one thing and drag it out to no extent and ruin your whole personality, all your self-work, everything that goes on in your life just because of it? or are you going to not let it get to you because you know that you've worked so hard to come to where you are today and you worked so hard on yourself so how much of this deserves an impact on you so you need to feel and you need to deal that and the way that people feel again that's very very different and this all comes back to you know having different hobbies having different outlets that you enjoy doing things towards so don't ever think that taking time out for yourself is unproductive it's not because if you don't feel and deal down the line these things accumulate and then when they accumulate and you start to completely change in behavior and change in the way that you are and as you present yourself in certain situations you start to get shocked at even who you have become and you're kind of confused on when did it all start and when you try to pinpoint it you go all the way back and whether that's something that happened five months ago or five years ago it goes a lot back because you never care to feel it then and the thing is you know it's kind of like a landslide you guys ever have that time where like you're in school and like you have one missing assignment and like it automatically demotivates you there's some there's certain people that like they don't like to do schoolwork and then you know they missed two three assignments and then they got zeros and then they're like okay yeah you know i'm just going down a landslide i don't care anymore and it's automatically kind of like the same thing when it comes to a lot of other aspects in life such as your prayers there's certain people they miss one prayer one prayer out of five and then they're like, mm, I'm just, I'm done, you know, I'm not good enough. And I missed it. That That's the end. You missed one prayer out of five. So now, because you missed one prayer out of five, you're going to sit here and not pray for the next three years because you felt guilty because you missed one prayer. Yeah, you should feel guilty. Yeah, you repent, you make it up. That's it. That's it. Try not to do it again. But people, they don't feel in deal. So they let that one thing overtake them and they don't deal with it accordingly. And then they let that guilt and, you know, hopelessness eat them. And especially with prayers, this happens, especially with the dean, because, you know, the thing about the dean that makes it a little bit difficult is because spiritually and emotionally those two things are very connected right so your spiritual status it does play play a very very big role in how you are emotionally so when you fail in your spiritual obligations automatically your emotional self feels guilt then you automatically start to think oh i'm never going to be good enough i'm never going to be able to do it i can't be a good muslim da, 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 when that's not the case we all have inconsistencies we all mess up but that doesn't mean you take that one inconsistency and you run with it forever that's not how that works because you're meant to try again, you're meant to do it again. And another thing that I want to talk about just on the base of what I just mentioned about religious inconsistencies is that sometimes what happens is that another reason why maybe you are struggling to accept who you are and accept the choices that God has made for you and you don't like to go on the certain route is because sometimes in life you are kind of forced to change. And that's the thing. Sometimes you really you're pushed behind your limits and you don't want to. There's a lot of times when you're pleased with who you are, but that doesn't mean that this is your end goal. There's a lot more that comes with it. So when something doesn't go your way, this doesn't automatically mean that this is the end. No. And just because you're a good person and you didn't get what you want, that doesn't mean that it's the end for you and God's upset with you. No. Sometimes you just have to keep developing. You just have to keep going. Because this is what Allah has chosen for you. Sometimes your du'as require you to become a higher level of yourself in order to attain and sustain the things that you want. And maybe that's not possible with who you are right now. So you should not be upset that Allah is putting you in circumstances where what you wanted never came true. And there's only one choice and that was a choice that Allah made and probably wasn't what you wanted on first bet. I understand. But maybe you want something in your life that is requiring you to go through this to change, to become what you want and to achieve what you want. So not everything that seems bad on the surface is actually bad. And honestly, when you develop and you try to become a better person as a whole, that really, really happens spiritually. Because when things don't go your way, and you don't know what's wrong with you, you turn to God. And sometimes we turn to God angry and devastated and upset. And you turn to God to figure out what's going on, right? And sometimes what happens is 
you feel like you want to improve and you want to let go of things that are haram, you want to let go of your lifestyle, but you just can't. And the one thing that really changed my perspective in regards to this is sit down and think about your iman right now. What do you do every single day? Are you praying every day? Yes. Okay. Are you reading the Quran every day? Yes. Are you studying a little bit something in regards to Islam every day? Yes. Okay. Maybe your bad habit is that you have a very, very bad habit of listening to music. And not just any super vulgar, super, you know, custom music. And it's something you can't let go of. And no matter what you do and no matter how you are utilizing your free time in regards to your spiritual obligations, it is something you can't let go of. So what I do is after I sit down and I write down all the things that I'm capable of doing that I am doing right now, put into perspective. You worked so hard to make your iman come to this point where you're able to pray, you're able to, you know, learn about the Quran, read the Quran. And of course, this is a blessing from Allah. This isn't something that we all get. This is a blessing from Allah. And Allah blessed you, you maintained it, you sustained it. And you worked really, really hard to come to this point where you made it a part of your lifestyle. And if it's a part of your lifestyle, is it really worth ruining over one thing? And that one thought really helped me get rid of a lot of haram things in my life. Because when you work so hard towards something... You don't want anyone to ruin it. And your iman is very, very much the same. Allah blesses us with, Allah blesses us with guidance. He blesses us with all these things, right? But sustaining and using your free will to constantly fulfill your obligations and fulfill also the sunnah and whatnot, that, that's come down to your choice for the most end, right? And when you worked so hard to maybe for three months straight, praying every day, reading Quran every day, do you really want something to come in between and ruin it? Do you really want something haram like music or adultery or whatnot to come in between and ruin it? No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you know that it took a lot in you and it changed you as a person and you don't want to become who you were before. Every day you need to wake up and ask yourself, what are you working towards? And inshallah, you know we are all working towards Jannah. But you need to know, especially also on this earth, what are you working towards? Are you working towards getting a job, being successful, or are you working towards pleasing God? The thing is, there's nothing wrong with wanting to become successful on earth. But if it starts to interfere with your relationship with God, then yeah, it's not something that you should glorify and worship. It is, it's just a part of this dunya that is something that you will also leave behind. So it isn't something that you should, you know, consume yourself in. But every single day you need to realign and ask yourself, why am I doing everything that I'm doing? And a lot of times you won't have an answer. Especially for the kids that go to school, they're in majors that they don't necessarily like, doing things that they don't necessarily want. But, you know, they're doing it because they need a check, they need money, they need a job, they need to be financially stable, whatever. And it makes sense because I sometimes also sit here and I'm like, man, do I even want to be this? I don't know. And that's the thing. When in doubt, you need to keep trust in Allah because as basic as it sounds, your knowledge will always be limited. So you have to trust the one that has infinite knowledge. And if Allah puts you through a different route in life or you end up going somewhere where you never expected to be, accept it. Accept it. Don't let it sit in you and make you feel like it's the end of the world. It never is. It never will be. And if anything, all the decisions and all the things that happen in this world are just so merely temporary. You need to think back about the last time you were so upset and you were so depressed and you were so hurt and you thought you would never be able to get over it. And now you're over it, right? And I think about this so much because, you know, like five years ago, I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to die. Like this is it. Like I can't go on. And now I look back and I was like, girl, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And that's the thing. These circumstances that make us feel like we cannot bear it are the circumstances that will make you into a more strong person and if you want to be strong you have to go through things that make you weak that's just how it works and there's really no other equation to it it's very easy to stand and say i'm strong i'm not scared of anything da, da, da. but then when you're faced forth with failure and you're faced forth with things not going your way you're faced forth with the unexpected then, then it's very hard to be strong and there's nothing wrong with not being able to be strong. I feel like, you know, strength and happiness. These are the two things that we very, very, very 
push upon one another and happiness is just an emotion it really is and it's a beautiful one and happiness goes sadness goes they both come so it's a cycle but we really force ourselves to be happy sometimes when we don't want to be only to mask up how we actually feel and to only to mask up what's actually wrong and this like i mentioned i say this all the time it catches up because there's only so much of you that wants to actually be happy and there's only so much of you that is actually going through something and it needs attention and it needs healing so don't ever force yourself to be happy because it's it's one emotion there's a lot of emotions out there some days you're gonna feel really really happy some days you're gonna feel really really off and either of these days don't determine what type of person you are or your worth or your what you are capable of doing they don't you know what i'm saying emotions they they always change so you can't rely on your emotions to be a litmus test or like a guidance for you to know where you'll end up. Like I mentioned earlier in this episode, productivity doesn't necessarily mean that you're always happy. That's not how it works for some people. Some people, they literally do it for burnout and then they're confused and messed up and whatnot. And it happens to everyone. We all stand at different rages. But the key here to remember is that no matter what happens, you can never ever quit in trying to become a better person just because things never went your way or because a decision wasn't what you necessarily wanted. And if you don't feel and deal and don't look at what makes you feel upset and don't take the time to understand what is your expectations from yourself and life, you will constantly live your life in regards to other people's expectations and in regards to what other people want from you and when you live in the way that other people want you to live you're not going to live in a happy way you know the thing is a lot of us we've been told our story from an outsider we've been told what we are like we've been told what we'll go through we're told how successful we'll be or how not successful we'll be we're told if we're smart or dumb we are told these things and if you don't like an aspect of your story you have every single right to change it but we don't learn to change it until it's too late and we live with these stereotypes that someone made of us in our own head when they actually have nothing to do with us because they don't even really know us the perspective that we know ourselves so sometimes your story is written by someone else and the biggest 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 thing to remember is that your real color your real destiny whatnot is in the hands of allah and whatever you decide to do on this earth you have a say in it so write your own story and write what you feel like is right for you and if things go wrong you don't live up to your own expectations it's okay try again but don't ever live your life according to other people's expectations and other people's stories because if you do that, you're putting yourself in a downward spiral of depression because you won't even know what you're doing everything for. And this starts off really with expectations from close ones and then they increase and they increase and they increase. And then there's people working in careers for 20 plus years straight and they're like, hold on, I hate this. Why am I even doing this? Well, maybe if you felt it and you dealt it a lot more earlier, you wouldn't be in this case today. So you need to figure out what's wrong when you know something is wrong inside of your heart don't mask it up don't be that person that thinks they're too cool for emotions you always end up playing yourself and you get more hurt later on inshallah everyone who listened to this episode benefited something from this this was a very very shorter episode compared to my other ones which are like nearly an hour but i just feel like there's really not much of a solution to this issue besides really feeling and dealing what you go through in that moment and presently remembering that no matter what happens god will always pick what's best for you because god has always loved you more than you loved yourself and if you have any doubt in that then think about the fact that every single time you take a breath your lungs ask for permission from allah and every single time allah says yes so you're breathing right now you're listening every single breath you take is given by the permission of allah so there's really no doubt that god love that god loves you there's no doubt in it he does so when it comes down to everything that you're going through, realize that whatever you're going through, and even if it's not something you want right now, it's being done out of love. And I hope that every single person who listens to this finds some type of peace in what they are going through, because it's not easy. It never is. But it's it's really all God's divine decree. And honestly, that is always the best decree. May Allah keep you all so, so happy. Assalamu alaikum.